The Pittsburgh Pirates defeated the Philadelphia Phillies over the weekend behind the young players of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We're going to recap the month of July and when are Austin Hedges and Rich Hill getting moved. We're going to talk about all of that and more on today's episode of Locked On Pirates brought to you by FanDuel. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast, everybody. My name is Ethan Smith, your host of the Locked On Podcast uh, Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates. And this weekend was fun, folks. It was a fun weekend. My hat bill is all over the place, but we'll just not worry about that right now. The Pittsburgh Pirates defeated the Philadelphia Phillies two out of three to end the month of July on a high note and it was nice to see this team do something like that in a month that featured not a lot of fun things to talk about with this team other than the fact that we got the promotion of Andy Rodriguez, Leo Piguero and Quinn Priester. We also have seen um, Henry Davis kind of grow a little bit in that right field spot and it was just nice to see the Pirates win this series, and especially win this series the way they did. The offense for the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates here was the focal point, realistically. I mean, Quinn Priester picked up his second MLB win, but he gave up five earned runs, walked six batters, and struck out seven. So that was probably the most wacky start he could ever have to get a victory out of. But the offense was a big reason why the Pirates won this series. They scored 13 runs in the final two games. If you watched yesterday's game, they were down 2-0, came back to tie it 2-2. They were down 4-2, came back to tie it 4-4. And then they walk it off in the bottom of the 10th inning. And it was another big moment for these young guys. These young guys have continued to push back against the league right now. And one of the bigger moments of this weekend series, and I think the biggest moment of the weekend series that kind of turned everything on its head, was Andy Rodriguez's triple. I mean, it kind of felt like it was a jolt of energy for this entire team. Uh, Brandon Marsh, of course, played the, uh, the ball wrong. Andy Rodriguez gets to third base a part of that huge bottom of the fifth inning where they scored four runs on Saturday night and were able to hold on thanks to David Bednar's huge uh, five-out save. Obviously, Alika Williams picked up his first hit in his first RBI over the weekend. Leover Peguero had his first three-hit outing over the weekend. Um, It's just the, the good guys. It's the good guys and the young guys doing good things. That is the big focal point of... It's now July 31st. We have two full months left of baseball. And this is what we want to see these guys do. And then, of course, if you watched the game yesterday, uh, one of the more fun plays that we've seen from the Pittsburgh Pirates all year came from Henry Davis and E. Rodriguez and Alika Williams on a 9-2-4-2 double play. Obviously, if you were watching the game yesterday, you remember what happened there. And it ended up being very crucial to the Pirates making their comeback bid. Of course, Nick Gonzalez hit the sacrifice fly to tie things in the eighth inning. And then Josh Palacios on his birthday was a triple shy of the cycle after he hit his walk-off home run uh, on his birthday. Uh, he became, by the way, the second or the first player since Alex Rodriguez on July 27th, 2002, to hit a walk-off homer on their birthday. But what you're starting to see You're starting to see these young guys push back against the league a little bit. Obviously, we've seen some of these guys come up, like Alika Williams, like Leo Piguero, Nick Gonzalez, and even Henry Davis right now, and they struggle a little bit, and that's warranted. They're rookie baseball players. They have never seen this kind of stuff before. They're going to struggle a little bit, but the growing pains and 
just getting better and pushing back against the league is exactly what Ben Sherrington and this Pittsburgh Pirates front office want to see these young guys do. And beating the Phillies, by the way, is – I didn't even really talk about the – I mean, they won the series, but beating a Phillies team that is in the middle of that crazy NL wild card race right now for the playoffs – is another jolt of energy for this team heading into a week where they face Detroit and Milwaukee. And you look at this team, and we'll talk about the trade deadline in the third segment today where Austin, or Austin Hedges and Rich Hill are probably the two guys that you're going to end up trading. But this team has the makings of finding out what its core could be heading into 2024. I think you can make the realistic argument that Henry Davis, Andy Rodriguez, and a few of these other young guys have kind of cemented it for themselves already and still have two full months to get better this year. And obviously you want the Pirates to be competitive. We saw them in a competitive state. They were in first place until the middle of June. You would like that now, but if it means the players are going to get better, the wins and losses – matter in that scenario but they don't matter as much as the maturation of these young guys that are going to be here for the next half decade or so and you're 10 games back i i I don't want to i don't want to give anybody false hope here and i'm not even going to give myself false hope but if you could find a way to string a five or six game win streak together that 10 games will turn into six or seven real quick and i think you have a different outlook on how your season's going. And that seems to be the mood in the clubhouse too. You heard Josh Palacios talk about it yesterday. Beating a wild card team like the Philadelphia Phillies means you gained ground on somebody in the playoff race and there's still two months to go. Now, realistically, the Pirates are not winning the NL Central. They are probably not going to get a wild card spot. But wouldn't it be fun if the young guys at least let us think about it a little bit? maybe get into that range of six or seven games back, you know, I think that would be pretty fun for this team. And they have a chance to do that this week, by the way, facing Milwaukee, I believe for four games. I want to say they face them Thursday through Sunday. The Pirates can find a way to win that series, especially behind the backing of these young players. That, that, that'll make things interesting. Uh, Obviously I believe Cincinnati is leading the NL central again. But let's make it interesting, guys. Let the let the kids make it interesting. And if they can continue to push back against the league, they can make it interesting. These are talented individuals, folks. And you're going to have the rookie pains. You're going to have the growing pains of some of these guys that are in year two. But ultimately, this is what we've been waiting for now, is you can look at the lineup card every day, even though Derek Shelton, for some reason, can never – make the same lineup two days in a row. But you can look at the lineup every day, and as long as your pitcher isn't Austin or Rich Hill and your catcher isn't Austin Hedges, you can look at guys that are going to be here at least for the next year or two. I mean, you have Andy Rodriguez, Connor Joe, Nick Gonzalez, Alika Williams, Leo Piguero, Tucapita Marcano when he comes back from injury. Jared Triolo has done a phenomenal job in relief of key Brian Hayes. Brian Reynolds, obviously. Jack Sawinski. Josh Palacios, maybe. Henry Davis. The Pirates have the makings of their core. They just have to find it. And right now, if they can keep winning games, they win two of three against the Philadelphia Phillies, things are going to get fun. And let's see what they can do heading into August. But before we head to August, it's July 31st, which means we have to recap the month of July here in the Locked On Pirates podcast. I almost said the Locked On Podcast Network again. It's okay. You can find the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And if you want to bet on the Pittsburgh Pirates in any capacity, down the last two months of the season, make some money before maybe win some money this month of August before football comes back. Make sure you use FanDuel. FanDuel is your one-stop shop for all of your sports betting here this year. Take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times 
your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet $20 and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200. You could spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to bet on all the things Pittsburgh Pirates or Major League Baseball here down the playoff stretch. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. So we're going to talk about the month of July. And the month of July, for anybody that was following this team, was not a fun month for this team whatsoever. Um, It wasn't like June where they got off to a decent start and then just fell apart. They just never really played good baseball this whole month. Um, You go back and you look across the entire month of, of July for this team. And by the way, let me just say this. I can't believe we're already about to be in August. This season has felt like it's flown by. But for the Pirates in the month of July, I mean, you had the series lost to Milwaukee, the series lost to the Dodgers, the series lost to Arizona. I mean, if it wasn't for these last two series, obviously they beat San Diego and Philadelphia, so they're 4-2 and in their last six. If it wasn't for those, their, their record this month would have been very bad. I mean, four of their eight wins this month came in the past six days. They ended the month eight and fifteen. They went eleven and fourteen in June, and it's just been the collapse that I said I didn't think would happen, and it's happened, and it's unfortunate. But there were still some things to like about the month of July, especially from the young players that we kicked this show off with today. And I think that's the focal point. Again, wins and losses would be nice. You want to improve win-loss-wise from the past two years. And I think they will do that. Uh, I predicted 74 wins before the season started. I don't think they reach that metric now. I could see them easily getting in the upper 60s, maybe 70 on the nose, which would be a seven or eight win improvement from the past couple years. But... The month of July, I think, was a teaching moment for a lot of these young kids to realize that they're not there yet, but if they push back, they can get there. And let's talk about the hit leaders in July. Of course, home runs. Jack Sawinski with five home runs in the month of July. Carlos Santana led in OPS, but since he's no longer with the team, a current member of the team, who led OPS in the month of July, Henry Davis. Batting average was headlined by Jared Triolo, who batted 262 in the month of July. Jack Sawinski led in RBIs with 14. Jared Triolo, of course, led with hits with 22. Base on balls was a three-way tie between Henry Davis, Andrew McCutcheon, and Carlos Santana, who all walked twice in the month of July. On base was Jared Triolo with a 323 mark. Slugging was Carlos Santana at 378 and Henry Davis at 353. So who was the hitter of the month for the Pittsburgh Pirates? You could guess by some of those team leaders it fell between three different guys, Henry Davis, Jack Sawinski, and Jared Triolo. I'm going to go Jared Triolo here. And reason being, he slashed 266, 327, and 287 on the month. No, he didn't have a home run. Big whoop. (laughs) He he didn't have a home run, folks. He had nine RBIs and eight walks. But one of the bigger parts of the month of July, and one of the things that kept me invested, even despite the losing, was the fact that Jared Triolo had a 13-game hitting streak from July 3rd to July 19th. And that was not something that anybody expected. He had a phenomenal month in terms of hitting the baseball, especially in the absence of key Brian Hayes, where we've seen he's done very good with the bat. He's done fine defensively over at third base. Makes you think a little bit about key Brian Hayes and Hayes 
getting the bat up to par, but I don't think Triolo is any big threat to key Brian Hayes over at third base. I think he's a very fine baseball player. I think if he continues to play well and keep Brian Hayes' absence, which I believe is supposed to end this week as he's been rehabbing in Indianapolis, I think Jared Triolo would make a just a just fine bench player behind Key Brian Hayes, who's had his injury issues over the past two seasons. I think that works fine for Jared Triolo. I mean, he can play shortstop. He if he can play third and uh, shortstop, he could definitely play second. Might even be able to play first. That might be something the Pirates look for, depending on what they decide to do here in the final 36 hours before the trade deadline. I don't think they're going to move on from G-Man Choi. I think he's too valuable to this team right now, and I could even see them re-signing him in the offseason. But Jared Triolo, he's my hitter of the month. Obviously, it could have went to Henry Davis. It could have went to Jack Sawinski. They both had good months as well. We've also seen Brian Reynolds picking it up as of late near the end of July with a nice little hit streak that he's been on. Um, then you get to the pitching and I miss the pitching so much from April and May. Uh, it hasn't been near what it was. Uh, obviously that was very unsustainable what they were doing in April and May, but there's still some things to like your pitching leaders from July. Of course, Mitch Keller leads in strikeouts with 27, your win leaders are Osvaldo Beto and Quinn Priester. Mitch Keller actually led the Pirates in losses in the month of July. Wins and losses, just melt. it doesn't matter to me anymore. Um, obviously, you heard me mention earlier about Quinn Priester picking up his second MLB win despite giving up five runs, walking six, and striking out seven. That, that should be your biggest reason why wins and losses don't really matter much. I mean, Mitch Keller had an eight-inning shutout against the Arizona Diamondbacks and got a no decision. It, it happens. ERA for starting pitchers. The leader was Rich Hill. Tells you how bad the starting pitching was in the month of July. He had a 5-7 ERA, which was the best among qualified starting pitchers in the month of July. Appearances was a four-way tie between Ryan Baruki, Yuri De Los Santos, Colin Holderman, and Dowry Moretta. I do think the Pirates could get calls on Colin Holderman. Uh, I just don't think they want to. I don't think the bullpen would be able to survive without a guy like Colin Holderman. Obviously, Carmen Majinski has come on very well. Uh, Ryan Baruki has pitched very well as of late. Yuri De Los Santos is a young piece there. Dowry Moretta as well. I don't think they would move on from Colin Holderman. Um, it's something they could do. Maybe bring back Cody Bolton. I just don't see it happening. Uh, saves, of course, was David Bednar with five and five opportunities. Innings pitch was Rich Hill with 30. I think Keller would have beat him out in that metric. But, of course, Keller um, didn't pitch for almost a week in between the, uh, the All-Star break. So, obviously, he didn't get the innings pitch that you would expect from him on a normal basis. Whip would be Johan Oviedo as well as opposing batting average. Johan Oviedo's whip was a 1.26. His batting average against was a 2 point or a 0 0.210. Oviedo, man. If he could just figure out how to not have those blow up innings, I think he would be just fine. And I think he is just fine. So that goes to my pitcher of the month. And yeah, I'm going to be safe with this pick, and I'm going to pick David Bednar. David Bednar had a phenomenal month. Ten games, five saves, .79 ERA, 11, point in a, uh, 11 in the third innings pitch, 17 strikeouts, a 184 opponent batting average, and a 1.41 uh, whip. I've heard the rumors about David Bednar being traded and teams being interested, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. He He's not going anywhere unless a team gives up multiple top 100 prospects for him. That's the only way I would trade David Bednar. I've, I obviously saw a lot of your reactions to my tweet about calling him untouchable. And I think that gets close to the metric of being untouchable if you label him a guy that isn't going to be available unless you're giving me one of your top prospects and maybe another. 
And I think that's going to be their asking price. Obviously, we've heard about Mitch Keller, too. I think the same thing. Both of these guys have a lot of team control. Both of these guys have a lot of good things going for them in Pittsburgh. And I think that they fit the trajectory of this team very well on what this team wants to do to win. So, no, David Bednar and Mitch Keller are not getting traded. By the way, moment of the month happened two nights ago. David Bednar saved against the Phillies in front of the second sellout crowd of the season, gets the final five outs, holds on to defeat the Phillies to uh, tie the series and then win the series yesterday. It was just awesome to see that sellout crowd go nuts. Uh, Yinzer Palooza weekend, obviously, yesterday was the Pirates annual charity game. Very fun weekend for the Pittsburgh Pirates and a very fun way to end the month of July. But the Pirates still have some business to do, potentially today. Maybe tomorrow before the Detroit Tigers game? Who knows? When do Rich Hill and Austin Hedges get traded? That is the biggest question I think that we have remaining over these final hours before the trade deadline on Tuesday at 4.30 Eastern time. Obviously, we saw Carlos Santana get traded. It was something I expected but didn't want to see. Um. Didn't want to see just because I like watching Carlos Santana. His energy is unmatched. He's a phenomenal baseball player. Very good veteran to have in a clubhouse. Traded to Milwaukee. But it, it had to be done. Expiring contract. Switch hitting first baseman. Something that obviously Milwaukee wanted and needed with Luke Voigt being hurt. Um, but Ben Charrington has hinted that Henry Davis would catch more following the deadline. So does that mean a Hedges deal is on the horizon? And despite his 180 average and his negative 1.0 war, Hedges could be valuable uh, for teams looking for a defensive-minded catcher. And I, I mean, yeah, I just laugh every time I read his batting average. I honestly almost wake up every day and see what Austin Hedges' batting average is, but it's a little less fun now considering he only plays like once or maybe twice a week. But – Pirates aren't going to get much back for either of these players, Rich Hill or Austin Hedges. But you have to trade them, and especially Hedges, because if, with what Ben Charrington's saying about wanting Henry Davis to get time behind the plate after the deadline, there's literally no point of having Austin Hedges on this team anymore. Because then your, your model is Andy Rodriguez catches primarily – and then on days he doesn't, Henry Davis slots in to catch. I would say Connor Joe or Josh Palacios move to right field, and then G-Man Choi or Connor Joe plays first base. I think that works out just fine. But Austin Hedges would literally have no reason to be on this team anymore at that point. So I think moving him is a no-brainer. You're going to get nothing for him. I mean, just, I mean, you're going to get something, but you're, you're not going to get anything that Pirates fans would be especially happy about. Uh, John Heyman and Odyssey have also hinted at teams that are interested in hedges. Um, Rich Hill is also another primary trade candidate, of course, agent expiring contract. And he struggled as of late, but as you heard me mention, he was the ER late, uh, ERA leader in the month of July. Um, he has not pitched six innings or more in the last three starts, including at least 79 pitches and five innings on Sunday, which piqued the interest of a lot of fans that he didn't go deeper in that game. Uh, but it's just been something customary with him. He's getting up there in age. And I think it's something that the Pirates are just holding on to. They didn't want to overwork him in the case that he is traded, which he should be. And again, you're not going to get a lot for either of these guys. Um, it obviously makes sense to trade both of them. Will that be it as far as what the Pirates do trade-wise? Probably. I don't think Keller moves. I don't think Bednar moves. I don't think Holderman moves. I don't think any other bullpen are moves. G-Man Choi, maybe. But based off of the return for Carlos Santana, it doesn't seem like there's much of a market for first baseman. So I'd assume Choi probably stays, and then the Pirates maybe talk about signing him to a one-year deal next year. But I don't think anything else really happens other than Hill and Hedges, and we'll see where Austin Hedges and Rich Hill end up over the next couple days. 
And we'll be talking about it here in the Locked On Pirates podcast. But, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, as you always do here on the Locked On Pirates podcast, here on the Locked On Podcast Network. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Ethan Smith. You can follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday. I'll be back tomorrow maybe talking about a trade or taking a look at what could happen before the trade deadline. But until then, I will see you guys on the flip side.